guys, it is Wednesday once again, and this week's topic is books that involve traveling or have traveling in them. In no particular order, we have Going Bovine by Liva Bray. And this is a book about a psychedelic road trip. <laughs> That's the only way to describe it. Poor kid, he has actually got mad cow disease. Um, a bad burger, probably, maybe. And his brain is slowly turning to mush. And so he's in the hospital, and he's like, you know, like, okay, I guess this is it. We're on the slow downhill decline when he meets an angel. Well, a Valkyrie. Sort of, something. Anyways, and they're like, hey, you know, you could die here in this hospital, or you could go on this crazy, mad adventure to find a cure. Woo! And so off he goes on this mad adventure, and it's very modern lib postmodern lib of Ray, where things are weird but accurate, and you just get the sense that the world is kind of like dystopic, but in an ironic, sarcastic, very funny way. The happy cult <laughs> is what I take away from this book on their travels. They come across this this church of happiness that really likes bowling and vanilla smoothies. And also the Snow Globe Company. Yeah. Really weird Snow Globe conglomerate company that is everywhere. And there's a band. There is a door. It's just, this book is wonderful. And if you haven't read it, go read it because it's just so much fun. And it just makes you so happy. And it's a little heartbreaking. It has like everything in it. And it's just like such a good social commentary mm -hmm. at the same time, which you absolutely adore because it's funny as well as smart. And I kind of feel like it takes place in the same world as Beauty Queens. Exactly. So if you liked Beauty Queens, you will probably love going bovine. Next on our list we have Shades of London, and this is a book where, well, okay, the traveling takes place a little bit kind of at the beginning. But she traveled, okay? She did it. She traveled, and and then we get our story. So, therefore, I think it belongs on our list. Yes, that is my justification. The first book in the series is The Name of the Star by Maureen Johnson. And in this book, our main character, Rory, leaves her home in the southern states, and off she goes to London. Um, she's all well, happy, fine. She's at attending a boarding school. Life is great. Then she chokes on her dinner one day and suddenly she can see ghosts. Yay! And just everything hits the fan. There is a Ripper murder going on where the Ripper copycat, I guess is the best word, um, is actually a ghost and she's a target. <laughs> this book is so well done. It grips you right away. You just have so much fun. You fall in love with all the characters. All the places, it seems so well researched. And the third book actually came out this year, and there was like a very long delay between <laughs> the second and the third book. And there's going to be a fourth one, so mm -hmm. um, I recommend you read all of them immediately. Good. Next on our list is An Abundance of Catherines by John Green, and this is basically the story of a guy who goes on a road trip with his best friend as he's trying to create an equation to figure out the dumper dumpy ratio in a relationship and this guy forget his main i forget the main character's name he has only ever dated catherine's he has a catherine problem and he started with the catherine in like kindergarten and then he dated a whole bunch of other catherine's and then he ended up on the same catherine who broke his heart typical john green sense of humor um, very offbeat, kind of nerdy, um, lots of random facts thrown in. <laughs> um, so if you really, really like The Fault in Our Stars, it's got that same kind of vibe, that same sense of humor, and that same kind of interweaving of intelligent things. Like, John Green just kind of meshes together. Yeah. And just craziness, like crazy silliness. And you root for random things from it. Like, I remember Deep Hunt. Yeah, I was just about to say they got chased by a pig. <laughs> and if you want to know how they ended up on a road trip getting chased by a pig, you'll just have to read the book. Read the book. Mm. Next on our list is The Last Hero by Terry Pratchett. Now, if you're a fan of Terry Pratchett, you know exactly what you're in for. 
This Kinda, is Discworld. Yeah. <laughs> this is spoofing the hell out of the <laughs> epic tradition. Oh, and it is so much fun. So this book follows Cohen the Barbarian and his merry bunch of barbarians who are now senior citizens. Just <laughs> exactly <laughs> what you'd expect. Dentures, weakness, old age. And like their reputation is like top notch. And just, it's not cutting out anymore. Like there's nothing left for them to do. And for example, at some point, one of the characters, one of the characters asked him, oh, what, what do you look for in life? And he's like, good dental work. Like, you know, just good <laughs> dental work. So they decide they are going to go on one last crazy adventure. They are going to go and face down the gods. So they, like, get their group together. They get, like, a little minstrel guy to, like, record Sing the their saga. song. And, like, Rincewind shows up at one point. <laughs> Rincewind is, like, my bro. <laughs> and they just go off on this, like, merry adventure. Climbing up the mountain to get to the gods. <laughs> and it's just so much fun and so silly, yet so relevant. And just... There's the edition that both of us had, we had to read it for our Tolkien and fantasy class, has this gorgeous artwork, and a lot of it's like spoofing, like really famous pictures. Like the cover of our book is Rinswin, like doing the scream. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so much fun. I mean, you could read it to your kids, but you're just as happy just reading it yourself. Um, if you're a fan of the Discworld, all the Discworld characters are, well, not all of them, sorry, are popping in. And if you don't know much about Discworld, you can still really easily get the gist of it. Like, Cohen the Barbarian is like a fairly obvious spoof <laughs> on a certain barbarian played by Arnold. Oh, damn. So yeah, definitely check this book out. Terry Pratchett is fantastic. Yes. Okay, last one on our list. This one it's, is so obvious. Okay, we're going to give you three <laughs> clues. There is a lot of freaking walking. There is a lot of walking. There is also a lot of characters who go their separate directions. This book is probably 95% traveling. Also, there's a big, giant eye. Like a little ring. And if you guessed <laughs> the Lord of the Rings, you're totally wrong. No, you're absolutely right. Why did you do that to me? I was just like, what? what's coming up? Is she changing it to The Hobbit last minute? <laughs> yes, The Lord of the Rings is the last book on our list because this is like the crazy quintessential fantasy walking thing. The whole like, no, if you're going to go into an epic quest, you have to walk. And walk. And walk. Let's walk. And walk. And walk. I, you, you, can, you can ride ponies for part of it. That's cool. <laughs> but the majority of it is going to be walking. And, like, you get to walk through Middle Earth and see all the things and meet all the people and do kind of relevant side quests. And... <laughs> walk up mountains, walk through snow, walk through the forests. Not get eaten by trees. Run into really crazy weird forest people. Tom Bombadil. You're going to do a lot of walking. <laughs> And if you have ever seen an honest trailer, yeah, um, go watch the honest trailer. It, it just it, it just illustrates our point. There's the honest trailer, and then there's the Lord of the Rings told in twenty seconds. <laughs> Did I show you that one? No. I'll link that one down below. I'll show you after, but it's it's pretty fantastic. So those are our picks for our top five books that contain traveling. What are your choices? Hey guys. I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 miles.